It was senior awards day. I'm all dressed up along with my best friend and other classmates because we had all gotten letters in the mail a few weeks before telling us that we would be receiving rewards on that day. Now during the award ceremony, I got different awards for different things along with my other classmates. But the award I was most interested in was the one award that went to the best all around high school student voted on by the faculty. As they were starting to announce the award, I am like fully anticipating my name to be called out, but instead my best friend's name is called. And all I can think is, what? You see, all throughout high school, my best friend and I, we did practically everything together. We hung out together, we took a lot of the same classes together, we ate lunch together, we were on the student council together, we were all in the same clubs together, like literally, we did everything together. So I should have been happy for my best friend, but why wasn't I? I didn't realize it at the time, but I was dealing with something called jealousy. Sometimes jealousy can lead us to be slightly agitated at someone else. And sometimes it can lead us to straight up disliking someone. He or she may be the nicest person we know. Maybe they've never done anything remotely mean to us. But once jealousy creeps into our hearts, we view them in a different way. I mean, think about it. There are some people that you don't like because they're mean to you. They ignore you, they call you names or talk down to you. Maybe they try to hit on the person you're dating or they spread a bunch of false rumors about you. And those times, it makes sense. But then sometimes there are people you dislike who have never done anything harmful towards you. And the only reasonable explanation for you not liking them is that you're jealous of them. And it could be for a million different reasons. Their ridiculous good looks, the car that they drive, who they're dating, the grades they get, the position that they have on the team or in the play, the attention they get from everyone, the house that they live in. Or maybe the reasons are something deeper, like how they seem to have the perfect, unbroken family, how their parents show up at all of their events or games, how they're healthy and never sick, but you're stuck with health issues that no one seems to understand. How it seems like they have confident conversations with other people so easily, but you can't even speak up in class. Whether your jealousy is over something small or runs really deep, here's what I know to be true. Jealousy changes the way you see others, and it changes the way you see yourself. When you see things that other people have that you don't, but wish you did, jealousy can lead you to feel unhappy about your life, even if you were totally happy with your life before. Or jealousy can make you feel insecure about who you are or who you aren't. Looking at them makes you feel worse about you. And that's when anger enters the scene because anger almost always follows jealousy. That person becomes the source of your unhappy feelings and eventually the target of your anger. When we feel anger towards someone, it is so much more difficult to celebrate the good things we have and the good things they have. So what do we do instead? We start to distance ourselves from them. We talk badly about them behind their backs. We secretly do what we can to bring them down. I mean, after all, if we can't have the good things they have, they don't deserve them either. And then all of a sudden, we have less peace with them and less peace with ourselves. And when that happens, we need direction and guidance on how to find a different response and reaction to jealousy. And if you've ever dealt with jealousy, you're not alone. Adults deal with it just as much as you do. In fact, this has always been a struggle for human beings in general. That's why we can read stories of people experiencing the same thing in the Bible. In ancient times, there was a man named Saul, who was the first king over Israel. He was initially known as a good and generous king. He was courageous in battle and generally had the respect of his kingdom. At one point during his rule, he and his people found themselves in a battle against a fairly powerful group of people called the Philistines. If you've ever heard of the story about David and Goliath, then you know who Saul was at battle against. Goliath was a Philistine. Check it out. Now the Philistines gathered their forces for war and assembled at Soko in Judah. They pitched camp at Ephes Demim between Soko and Azekah. Saul and the Israelites assembled and camped in the Valley of Elah and drew up their battle line to meet the Philistines. The Philistines occupied one hill and the Israelites another with the valley between them. It's the perfect setup for a good old-fashioned showdown. But the Philistines 
had a secret weapon. A champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came up at the Philistine camp. His height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor of bronze weighing 5,000 shekels. So obviously this was a big dude. He was also a champion. He crushed people. Who would stand up to him? And that's when David stepped in, saying he was ready to fight Goliath. Saul heard about this and sent for him. David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. Basically, Saul is saying David is crazy for thinking he could take Goliath on. But eventually, David talked Saul into it. And this is what happened. As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. As you can imagine, David became an instant hero to the Israelite people. But his story didn't end on that battlefield. King Saul promoted David because of his courage, and David delivered. Whatever mission Saul sent him on, David was so successful that Saul gave him a high rank in the army. This pleased all the troops and Saul's officers as well. David went on to have great success during that time. It was like everything he touched turned to gold. All the people loved him. The Bible says it this way. As they danced, they sang, Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. The people danced. They quite literally celebrated him and praised him as greater than their king. You could probably imagine how that went over. I mean, put yourself in Saul's shoes. How do you think he felt about everyone loving David more than him? Look at Saul's reaction. Saul was very angry. This refrain displeased him greatly. They have credited David with tens of thousands, he thought, but me with only thousands. What more can he get but the kingdom? And from that time on, Saul kept a close eye on David. As the people continued to praise David for his heroic efforts, they began to view him as greater than Saul. Now it's not that the people turned on Saul, they just really liked David. And that's when jealousy set in for Saul. When Saul saw how successful he was, he was afraid of him. Saul could have been happy for David. He could have applauded him along with the people and celebrated the fact that David helped his nation succeed. But instead, Saul felt threatened by David's rise to fame and power. In fact, he eventually plotted to kill David and spent a large majority of the rest of his life chasing after him in hopes of taking David out, which is crazy because Saul was the one who recognized David's skills and promoted him to a leadership position in the first place. So what changed? I think the author of this proverb gives us great insight about how jealousy can lead to destruction. A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. If we're not careful, we can find ourselves in the same position as King Saul. We'll discover for ourselves how jealousy of a friend can rot, destroy, and ruin us. Jealousy can destroy that friendship. Jealousy can cause us to doubt our own talents, achievements, and successes. Jealousy can rot how we feel about ourselves. Jealousy can kill our sense of peace. We will constantly encounter people who seem to have better things and a better life than us. That will never stop. And sometimes that sets our hearts in a strange direction. And if we aren't careful, that gut feeling of jealousy has the potential to not only ruin our relationship with others, but also ruin the way we feel about ourselves. Okay, so we all get it. Jealousy hurts us, but what are we supposed to do about it? You can't just decide to not feel something you feel, right? I mean, have you ever tried that? Let, let's, let's practice that for a little bit. I mean, think of someone you're jealous of. Now don't be jealous. Did it 
Did that work? Of course not. It's ridiculous. But there is something we can do. Something that all the research and brain science says can actually help us lessen the effects of jealousy. Here it is. We can celebrate others. Because the more I celebrate others, the more I like me. It's kind of like this. Think of a boat. Like a little one that you might see out on a lake gently floating on by. For some people, it's fun. But for me, well, I spend most of my time on any boat trying to, well, you know, it's not pretty. And since my brain is making me nauseated, I can't just unfeel that. I can't just tell myself, hey, don't feel like you're gonna barf. It doesn't work that way. But you know what works? There are these little wristband things that you can wear when you go out on a boat. Some normal looking, nothing special wristbands. And here's what's crazy. There's no medicine in them. They just put pressure in the right spot to trick my brain into feeling something different than what it's feeling. And celebrating others works the same way. It shouldn't work the way it does. But when you do it, you can trick your brain into feeling less jealousy and more love and compassion. Here are two great ways to put this into practice. First, start with yourself. Look at your own life and determine what's worth celebrating. What are you good at? What do you have to be thankful for? What's good in your life right now? These might seem like really cheesy questions to ask or practices to participate in, but trust me, write them down. Maybe even challenge yourself to write down one thing every single day. It'll help. Second, move to the person you're jealous of. When you feel that tug towards jealousy, ask yourself what you can celebrate about the person you're jealous of. What are they good at? What things make you thankful for them? Write those things down too. This may be difficult at first. It may seem pointless, but if you can stick with it and stay committed to the process, you'll be amazed at how it changes how you see yourself and how you see the person you're jealous of. This week, I wanna remind you that this is normal. It's something that people of all ages struggle with. And unfortunately, it's a battle you may face your entire life. I don't tell you that to discourage you, but to encourage you to start working on this now. Because if you can start fighting back now, it will set you up for a better future forever. Jealousy will rot your relationships and rot your peace. The more you celebrate others, the more you like yourself. So who do you need to celebrate? You may not be able to talk about them by name in your group of friends because other people know them, but you can begin to brainstorm ideas for how to celebrate others in group. And on your own, you can begin the immediate work of celebrating the people you're jealous of, and in turn, experiencing more freedom in your relationship with yourself and others. So what is one thing you can do this week to celebrate them?